So what's going on guys kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the new one shot Sharon build that will one shot bosses in literally a single second. Like you can see from the gameplay, you will be spending more time walking to the boss than actually shooting him. So if you are interested in this build, then in this guide I will show you what weapons and modules you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best reactor and external components. And then lastly, we will take a closer look at the gameplay and weapon mods, so you would know the reason behind every single build choice, and what exactly will give us this insane one-shot damage and much more. So our new Sharon one-shot build is insanely powerful, because we will use a specific module setup, that in combination with just one single weapon, will completely destroy any enemy you come across. The only thing you need to know is to be far away from the enemies and before using your one shot, activate the active camouflage skill. So then we would utilize all of our buffs and it's that simple. So then with that said, now let's take a look at our modules. For the first one we have the overcharge edge, which modifies our active camouflage to consume shields instead of mana. Our ambush damage increases by the amount of shields that we consume. Then the short sword that modifies the charge sub attack and we get increased module capacity, which is our main goal. Then increased HP, that increases our max HP by 22%. Then increased death, that increases our defenses by 16%. Then MP conversion, that reduces our skill cooldowns by 9% and as well reduces our max mana by 4%. Then focus on electric, that increases our electric skill power by 19% and reduces skill cooldowns by 6%. Then HP amplification, that increases our max HP by 23%, but reduces our max shields by 9%. And finally the nimble fingers, which reduces our skill cooldowns by 6%. So overall our main goal with this setup is to use the overcharge module, because this is a one part of the buff that gives us this one shot bullet. But then as well the more shields we have, the more damage we will be able to do because of the overcharge edge, which instead of taking mana will now take shields. And then lastly, we want to get increased HP as well, so we could survive multiple hard bosses at the same time. Then next up let's take a look at the best weapons and mods that we should use. So for this build we only want to use two weapons, which is the sniper for that one shotting bosses and then the thunder cage for fighting multiple enemies. So then for the first one we have the thunder cage submachine gun. This is currently the number one meta weapon that doesn't need any introductions. So the way you get it is by first of all reaching mastery rank 1, then obtaining the Thunder Cage Blueprint, Thunder Cage Nanotube, Thunder Cage Polymer Syncytium, and Thunder Cage Synthetic Fiber from various battlefield missions across the sterile land. And afterwards then take those four cage materials to the Anais in Albion and pay 100k gold to start research and it's that simple. So then when you got it, for mods we want to use the rifling reinforcement, that increases our ADK by 12%, then action and reaction, that increases ADK by 15%, but increases our recoil by 5%, then weak point insight, that increases our weak point damage by 5%, and critical hit rate by 1%, then better insight, that increases our critical hit rate by 10%, then consume magazine, that increases reload time modifier by 6%, and a weak point damage by 2%. Then consume magazine, which increases reload time modifier by 6%, and a weak point damage by 2%. Then better concentration, that increases critical hit damage by 9%. Then fire rate concentration, that increases fire rate by 8%, and critical hit damage by 3%. Then concentration priority, for 8% critical hit damage increase, but our reload time modifier gets decreased by 8%. And finally the chill enhancement, that adds chill ADK equal to 8% of your weapon's ADK. With these mods, like for most of the weapons, we want to focus on increasing our damage and because of our insane buffs from the rest of our setup, so we just want to focus on as much crit and ADK stats as possible. And finally, for our second weapon of choice, aka the main part of our build, we have the afterglow sword sniper rifle. On hitting a weak point, this weapon will inflict the unique effect called the Dead Propagation, which increases our critical hit rate, and because of our setup, this is 100% guaranteed. So the way you get it is by collecting all items, reaching Mastery 15, and researching it for 100k gold 
By talking to the Anais at Albion, you can get the Afterglow Sword Blueprint, Nanotube Blueprint, Polymere Synxium, and the Normal Blueprint by farming the Intercept Battle on the Hard Mode. And then for the last Afterglow Sword Synthetic Fiber Blueprint, you can get it from the Vespers on Hard Mode, or from Kingston on Hard Mode as well. And then when you have it, we wanna use mods like the Weak Point Sight, that increases our Weak Point damage by 10%, but decreases accuracy by 5%. Then Better Insight, which increases critical hit rate by 10%. Then Fatal Critical, which increases critical hit damage by 5%. And Critical Hit Rate by massive 1%. Then Shankton First Shot, that after you reload, your first shot gets 100% ADK increase. Then Action and Reaction, that increases ADK by 15% and Recoil by 5%. Then Better Concentration, or increased critical hit damage by 9%. And finally the focus on fire, that increases the fire skill power by 19% and decreases skill cooldowns by 6%. As any sniper weapon we want to increase our crits and overall damage. So with our mod setup we have made it that you can basically crit the enemies 100% of the time. Then next up let's go over to the base reactor and external components. So your reactor is very important item that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. I recommend prioritizing using a reactor with the highest skill power and a sub attack power. Specifically, my best job that I got is this tingling mixture reactor with the afterglow sword condition, which is yet another reason for our high damage. And then as for your external components, they're even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough to find basically every possible combination with a good stat roll. For our build specifically, I recommend to use the HP support auxiliary power that increases our max HP, then volcanic sensor that again increases our max HP, then annihilation memory for increased health and defenses, and lastly the HP support processor that again increases our max HP. And finally, let's take a quick look at our skills and when we should use them. But as we mainly focus on our one-shot capability, so to be honest, the only skill you really need to know about is the active camouflage. So the first passive skill is called the Assassinator, which increases our damage when we attack the enemy, that is not attacking our character. Killing enemies with a skill in ambush state will reset our cooldown for the active camouflage. Then our first active skill is the Cutoff Beam, that attacks the enemy with the electric blade to deal damage and inflict them with the electrocute effect. Then the second one is Active Camouflage, that gives us the ability to hide from enemies. When attacking or using skills, Active Camouflage state ends immediately, regardless of the time remaining. When the state will end, Sharon will also enter the ambush mode, which will give us even more damage. So then, to get that one shot, we just simply look at the enemy, then activate the camouflage and then one shot him and that's it. We don't want to get hit by the enemy or even be seen, so usually the further the range the better. Then next up we have the impact rounds, that launches built-in explosives forwards from the arm to stun enemies. And finally we have the flash short sword, which targets enemies within aiming range and throws multiple knives to attack them. Knives will then explode to inflict enemies with the damage and the electrocute effect. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.